nice uh, little tour of the port that uh, you know not many people get access to the port these days so uh, we'll tell you a little bit about the port um, on our way through. Now I'm going to just pass back a couple of these uh, pamphlets and they're a little bit about the history of the corkscrew which I'm going to talk about and there's some pictures and photos of the old corkscrew versus the new so you may or may not remember what the old one looked like but this can just give you a bit of a visual as I'm talking about it. Um, when we come back from the corkscrew you guys will actually get one of these to keep so these ones on the bus are just for you to look at as we as we head out to the port. On your left you'll see two, there's two wood chip piles in a row. The first one is ABP or Australian Blue Gum Plantation. It's their soft wood chip pile and they, that stockpile can hold up to 85,000 tonnes which is about two shipments of soft wood chips. The next stockpile on your left is their hard, ABP's hardwood chip stockpile the only the difference you can you can sort of tell the difference between the two chips. Um, the softwood chips are lighter in colour, and the hardwood chips are darker. But that the hardwood chip stockpile can hold up to 150,000 tonnes, which is a good three shipments of hardwood chips. Uh, most people around town want to know about the ABP truck unloaders otherwise often known as the rocket launchers, <laughs> I can assure you that the bus driver, oh, the bus driver, the truck driver is not in the truck. <laughs> Everyone always wants to know that. I promise you they're not. Um, and most people want to know how the truck actually stays in place at such, a, such an angle. Train. And it's pretty simple really. There's a, a big piece of steel that comes from the base of the floor and sticks out and it just holds the truck in place. Um, and uh, it's just amazing, really. It stops the, stops the truck from moving and they empty the, the wood chips. Um, and it takes about 15 minutes from where to go. On your left, you'll see some wind tower components. And they are going up to, I think that's the Murrawarra wind farm. So they're um, wind tower um, sections. So I think five sections make the tower and then the nacelle and the wind blades. So they're pretty humongous. If we head looking straight out from the bus, you can see berth number five, and on berth number five is another wind tower component vessel. Uh, we're starting to see over the next 18 months, we'll have lots of wind tower component vessels. There's lots of wind farms in Victoria currently being built. Um, Port of Portland's one of the ports of choice for that. And coming up on our, as we turn left, and head straight ahead, that's berth number six, which is predominantly a wood chip berth. And we also do other cargoes like um, logs and fertilizer and so forth. These two are our busiest berths. Uh, they can do, they do, berth number five is our most busiest because it has this beautiful open lay down area where cargo can be, can be uh, stockpiled and, and, and loaded onto the vessel and it's utilised about 80%, which is, uh, which is quite high. In terms of the, the wood chips, so there's a wood chip ship here. You can sort of see some wood chips and the, the loaders, uh, the conveyors. They load 24-7 while a while ship is in port, and it takes about three days to load a hard wood chip vessel, operating 24-7 and loading about 50,000 tonnes. They bring in on the trucks about eight to 9,000 tonnes per day, and that's about 250 truck movements per day. Most of the wood chip comes from around a 200 kilometre radius, with most of it, or the predominant amount of it, coming from within 100 kilometres. The wood chips mainly go to China, uh, and some go to Japan as well. And that's kind of flipped over the last sort of five years. It used to mostly be Japan and to China, um, and now it's mainly China. And the hardwood chip is plantation grown, meaning that it's not native forest. It's used to make newspaper print, high quality paper, and clothing. And eucalyptus globulus is the correct name for the variety of hardwood chip. So you can see that they're unloading one of those big um, wind tower sections. They have to actually unload it onto the deck of the berth. Um, then biosecurity come and check every single component 
um, and then once that component's checked, it will get put onto a truck and sent up to the wind farm. So it's quite a lengthy, slow process of unloading that every single component has to be checked from a biosecurity perspective. And so if we're coming up uh, sort of at the left, top left of the windows um, is the grain silos, the grain cork grain silos. When it rains in the Wimmera, <coughs> the port can handle up to about a million tonnes of grain per annum or per season. But when there is no rain, there is no grain. And unfortunately, 2018 is one of those years where there is no rain and no grain. Uh, grain, however, is um, a cargo that actually comes in via truck and train. Most of our other cargoes all come via truck, um, whereas, yeah, grain can come in via train when it's coming. There are 24 silos there, each holding 2,500 tonnes. Can you do some quick maths? Okay. That's about 60,000 tonnes that they can hold. And the biggest vessel uh, into Portland with grain was about 62,000 tonnes. <coughs> <coughs> so a little bit more than what they can hold. In terms of the port, oh, as we come here though, I have to point this out, this is a beautiful view of the port that um, you really only get this view when you're right here. So it's one of those insider views. It's a great one if you want to grab a, a photo. Nice with the ships in the background, but it'd be a nice place for us to have our offices, I think. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Grain Corp has yeah. their office just there. They're very lucky. <laughs> uh, in 1996, 36 years after the port first opened, the Port of Portland became Australia's first privatised port. The port contributes around $2 billion to the Victorian economy, and we handle seven main cargoes on six working berths. That includes forestry, which we've talked about, grain and uh, hardwood chips, soccer chips and logs, grain, smelter products, fertiliser, livestock, mineral sands and project cargoes like these wind towers you see today. The Port of Portland is um, Victoria's only naturally deep water port. What does that actually mean? Uh, what it means is that we don't have to do lots of dredging to maintain our depths. And as we come around this corner, this is known as the K.S. Anderson Wharf. Uh, it's our deepest, it has our deepest, it's our deepest berth. Um, and at about 12.5 metres. The port at the moment, we're reaching our, our peak trade volume at about 7 million tonnes per annum and about 300 vessels per year. The ships per annum haven't changed much over the last sort of five to 10 years. It's just the volume on each ship has got bigger as the ships have got bigger and bigger and bigger. A truck movement can occur on port about every 43 seconds. So it's about quarter of a million truck movements per year. And each day there can be up to about 500 people on port. It's a bit quiet around today, just a couple of vessels on port. Um, but yeah, it can, be very, it can be a very busy little port. The Port of Portland is 100% owned by Palisade Ports Proprietary Limited, which is an investment managed by Palisade Investment Partners. All that really means is that we're basically owned by Australian super funds. So if you own, if you're in a couple of different super funds, you probably might even just own a little piece of the port. Now, as we're heading up, we're heading up towards the smelter berth, which is where we'll disembark for you to go and see the corkscrew. Um, so if you haven't listened to anything I've said at all, just listen up now, please, for what I'm about to say. Um, please don't leave anything on the bus. This is the bus we will get back onto, but it's just easier if we take all our things off and bring them back on. Um, if you do need assistance, there's lots of people with these high-vis vests on and they're all port workers. Um, please just grab one of us, ask one of us, um, and we're, we're here to help. Um, please feel free to take lots of photos. You're here to enjoy it, but keep moving and allow others to keep going as well. Uh, under, children under five can't climb the corkscrew um, and all children or pe kids under 16 must be accompanied by an adult. Um, it's about a 400 metre walk out to Someone's the corkscrew the car and, it's turning and if you feel like you can't make that 400 metre walk back and forth we've actually got a number of golf buggies so just come and see me as we disembark if you'd like to take advantage and hop on one of the golf buggies to get back and forth. We're, 
to slow me. <laughs> That's all right. Um, uh, oh yes, and also, so at the top of the um, at, at the top of the uh, course group, there's only allowed to be 14 people. So we've got a couple of port staff at the top and the bottom of the corkscrew who will just um, keep you moving and make sure that there's only um, the right number of people at the top and the bottom. And really, I, it's all about, we want everyone to have an opportunity to get their photo shot and to get their walk up to the top. So just be mindful and respectful of, of everyone. We only have a certain amount of time. So let me just tell you what time we'll need to be back at the bus. Yeah, you'll need to be back at the bus at 12.30. Okay, so um, we should be, we're about on time, so that shouldn't be too hard, but I'll be, I'll be down at the corkscrew making sure that everyone heads back to the bus once you've climbed up and down and, um, and walked your way. It's about a five minute walk, I'd say, down to the actual corkscrew. Just keep yourselves to the right of the walkway on your way down. It's quite, it is quite windy today, and it's quite windy up the corkscrew. So just take your time. Don't rush. Hang on to your hats. Yes, and definitely hang on to your hats. Yeah, I think we're just waiting for this one, this bus to leave, and then just jump off and head straight, straight down. And the guys will be at the base to let you up. Thank you very much. 